it's not just conservatives. I mean, yes, we're talking about this too, but it's not just guys like me and Ben Shapiro and Glenn Beck and, uh, you know, Andrew Wilkow and other guys on, on 1440, Mark Levin, Sean Hannity. It's not just us talking about this. It's not just us saying it's incredibly clear that he was perpetrating a hate crime hoax. There's actually quite a few people on the left that are talking about this as well. And if you don't believe me, you need look no further than David Axelrod. And David Axelrod tweets out the other day, unless some better explanation surfaces, here's the lesson of this weird turn in the Jussie Smollett case. You can contrive a hate crime, make it national news, get caught, and if you are well-connected celebrity, get off for $10,000 and have your record expunged and the file sealed. Now, David Axelrod is not exactly a conservative. This is a guy who was an advisor for President Obama and had worked for the Clintons before. He had worked for several Democrats, lifelong Democrat. David Axelrod is not a conservative figure. And yet here he is coming on and saying, well, it seems to me that the lesson of this is if you're well connected enough, then you can perpetrate a hate crime hoax and walk off not scot-free, but basically scot-free. And, I mean, David Axelrod, weird as it is to say this, is right. Not somebody that's motivated because he he hates black people or hates gay people or he's conservative or he is trying to cover for President Trump or anything crazy like that. This is David Axelrod saying, yeah, the lesson here is that as long as you're wealthy and well-connected, you don't really have to worry about breaking laws all that too much. And what's really sad is that he's right. And by the way, he's not the only person on the left that's talking about this. Let's go to another person that was close to President Barack Obama. Let's go to his chief of staff, who is now currently the mayor of the city of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel. And the ethical cost is you have, as a person who was in the House of Representatives when we try to pass the Shepard legislation that dealt with hate crimes, putting them on the books, that President Obama then signed into law, to then use those very laws and the principles and values behind the Matthew Shepard hate crimes legislation to self-promote your career is a a cost that comes to all the individuals, gay men and women, who will come forward and one day say they were a victim of a hate crime who now will be doubted, People of faith, Muslim or any other religious faith, who will be a victim of hate crimes. People that of also of all walks of life and backgrounds, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation. Now this cast a shadow of whether they're telling the truth. And he did this all in the name of self-promotion. And he used the laws of the hate crime legislation that all of us collectively over years have put on the books to stand up to be the values that embody what we believe in. This is a whitewash of justice. A grand jury could not have been clear. To then say, not only is the cost, the $10,000 doesn't come cost financially, but all the other repercussions of this decision it made to me, where is the accountability in the system? All right, so there you have it, Rahm Emanuel saying, and keep in mind, I want you to listen to his motive. This is somebody that really believes that hate crime laws should be taken seriously, that hate crime should be on the books. I don't. I think that violence against people is illegal. Therefore, we don't need to make it extra super duper illegal just because one person happens to have one skin color or the other. But without getting into all that, my point in all of that is Rahm Emanuel and I are not exactly political allies, nor am I and David Axelrod. But Rahm Emanuel the chief of staff for President Obama before he became the mayor of Chicago. Here he is saying, look, we worked really hard on these hate crime laws and for Jussie Smollett to spit in the face of that and basically craft and create a hate crime to bolster his own career is sickening. And Rahm Emanuel is exactly right, which is so weird to say on this particular program that I, as a a super duper conservative am saying, yep, I agree with David Axelrod and I agree with Rahm Emanuel. That ought to be a pretty big tell 
that the evidence is very conclusive that Jussie Smollett completely fabricated this entire thing. And yet, there are people on the left that are still convinced and still trying to convince others that this is murky, it's a mystery, we can't figure it out, we're not really sure, maybe he did it, maybe he didn't. And the only reason it's abundantly transparent, the only reason that they are taking that stance is because they want the hate crime to be true. I think Babylon B actually put, put it the best. And for those of you who don't know, Babylon B is a satire site that does news from sort of a, a Christian conservative perspective, but they're doing joke uh, news stories. And so because of that, they did one right after the news broke that the hate crime was completely made up when the grand jury came out with, with their findings. And the results of that were, according to the Babylon B, that liberals are incredibly upset that a hate crime didn't happen, which is framing it correctly. It is weird that people that claim to really care about minorities and, and care about homosexuals and uh, people of, of ethnic minorities and that kind of thing, that they're the ones saying, I really wish this were true. And why is that? Because it fits the narrative. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.